So this morning, we're going to complete what we started yesterday. We did part one of the 2025 earnings analysis, and we looked at the uh, automotive division. We looked at the energy division. We looked at the robo-taxi division. So we're going to look at the rest of the places where income derives uh, this morning. Then we're going to take a look. We're going to actually break down the profit I'm expecting. Very simple, straightforward methodology. In fact, it's so simple, so straightforward, and so <laughs> easy to understand. I think I'm the, it, this, is the, this is the best analysis I can think that I've ever done. I'm very, very happy with this analysis and think it's got a good chance to turn out to be pretty close to the truth. Okay, so that's what we're going to do this morning. And then I'm going to, you know, come up with a final number, the final profit number. And then you guys can figure out what PE you want to apply to that. And we'll know what the stock price should be at the end of 2024 or early in 2025 if uh, investors start to believe what I'm laying out here or something close. All right, so you ready to start? Okay, here we go. Let's begin with Optimus. Okay, Optimus for 2025, I'm anticipating that Elon will not uh, do differently than he stated. There will not be any sales of Optimus in 2025. That'll start in 2026. But there will be thousands not a thousand, not one thousand, but something more than a thousand that will be utilized in the factories, and this will have a tremendous bottom line benefit in terms of reducing cost of goods sold. Now, there's a lot of conversation out there about whether Optimus will be extremely profitable initially. Uh, there's uh, yeah, Larry. Goldberg, who you know I respect tremendously, thinks there will be a, a like a one to one relationship between a supervisor. Uh, for each optimist that is on the floor, which would mean that there would be almost no benefit uh, in terms of the bottom line uh, as long as that one-to-one -one relationship continues. Um, I think it'll be a much faster conversion than that. I don't think it'll be one-to-one -one even you know, after the first week or so. That's just me. Um, but it, I don't know. We'll, <laughs> we're going to find out. I think one of the ways to really uh, get our arms around that is to start finding out what other uh, manufacturers of uh, humanoids are finding out. By this point, there's a lot of activity in warehouses. Uh, when I say a lot, I mean in probably the dozens um, of humanoids that are actually working at Amazon or working at these various auto companies or whatever. We should know by now how long does it take before the uh, the humanoid can be left alone um, and not have a one on one or even a you know one supervisor for two or three or four. So that's going to have a big impact. I'm going to assume that the uh, that the uh, humanoids will be working largely on their own with some supervision, um, maybe on the order of one to five or something like that. Um, and so therefore, I've done a big analysis on this earlier uh, last week, I think it was, where I came up with $500 million in savings in terms of cost of goods. I am not going to use that in my overall analysis for 2025 right now, but that is the number I'm expecting as the year progresses and we begin to maybe get some feedback from Tesla on that. We'll know whether or not that might be true. Okay, then we got passive income. First of all, there are the regulatory credits, the CO2 credits, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Multiple analysts this week are concluding that this resource is not going away anytime soon. And in fact, most of them are saying they believe it will be increasing, not decreasing. So my assumption for this year will be a modest increase around the same as vehicle sales. So we, if we have a 25% increase in vehicle sales, maybe we'll see a 25% increase in those credits. Licenses. Uh, lots and lots of analysts are very certain that licenses will be coming soon. They believe that this will be a huge catalyst. Some of them believe it'll be a huge catalyst to the stock, um, so like uh, Gary Black and others. Um, and, and I believe that if it begins to happen, it certainly will uh, contribute uh, massively to the bottom line. Um, however, what I'd be looking at is um, I have no evidence <laughs> that any of these are even close. <laughs> the biggest evidence would be, um, you know, the uh, uh, having um, several people talking about Elon right now from the industry in very kind ways <laughs> that maybe are trying to butter him up. 
or po potentially the fact that Stellantis CEO was at the 1010. So those will be indications, but I, there's nothing right now on the horizon that would give me a belief that we are going to see that in 2025 or that we'll see any revenue from that in 2025. Then we have the category of services and other uh, we have the charging stations. Uh, growth in charging stations is expected to continue, uh, you know, about the same as last year in 2025. We also have the semi, uh, the you know, Tesla semi. The charging stations with those are beginning to go in place. Uh, I'll be reporting on that more tonight. If you want to listen tonight, I'll be talking about that. Um, now we also have other brands, you know, other car brands, auto automakers who now have access to the te Tesla chargers. And that will bring, bring a larger increase than norm than we would normally expect with regard to the uh, total amount of revenue coming in per charging uh, location. Then we have insurance. I'm very hopeful that this category will get more action this year and that will finish off the states that are not currently participating, especially California, where the insurance is available, but it's still based on your age and the number of accidents you've had in the last three years and what neighborhood you're in, et cetera. I'm hoping that this will all change and that they'll allow Tesla to use the safety system that they are in other states. Uh, it could have a serious impact for the community at large. It's not gonna have a big impact on Tesla's bottom line, but I think it would be a great thing uh, to see this change over take place. By the way, eventually the insurance business is going to go away because you're not going to be uh, charging people for insurance. Tesla is going to be covering the, uh, you know, if there's an accident caused by FSD, it'll be Tesla's fault. Services, uh, resale of leased cars and resale of trade-ins might drop off significantly as Tesla vehicles that any Teslas that come in off a of lease are Teslas that come in from trade-ins. Those are going to go straight into the robo-taxi fleet. So I'm not sure that we'll see. I think that'll just be a, a, a big drop in terms of that. Now, will that be first half? No, that'll be second half and going forward after that. Then the repairs, upgrades, maintenance uh, from the service centers, that'll continue to grow as the fleet grows. And Elon has been talking about it recently. He wants to turn that into a factory-like system, uh, way more efficient, way more effective, uh, way better for everybody. And then on the solar side of things, no idea. No idea what's happening with solar. Then we have the AI. Okay, so we now have these massive computer capabilities. As we have the dojo, we have the uh, new system down uh, in the south end of, of the Austin, uh, uh, you know, uh, Gigafactory. Uh, and we've got the original supercomputer that's been all we had until a year ago. And it's a pretty significant, you know, uh, piece of equipment. Um, but I don't see any revenue yet. I don't think that we'll see any, uh, I don't think there's going to be any revenue coming up this year in that area. All right, so there you go. Now let's go up and let's look at the revenue and profits from each category. So let's start with automotive, our vehicles, okay? Overall, um, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I got, it. oh yeah, there we go, okay, yeah. So we, we, we all agree that Elon is good at estimating the number of cars that are gonna be produced and shipped. He's been very good at that. So we're looking at 450,000 additional cars. So let's take this simple mathematical way of getting to the in, in, increase in pro, or the total gross profit for cars next year. Simple math would be, we'll start with uh, what happened this last year. Last year, the uh, the um, there was the each car contributed. $4,026 of gross profit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, let me start that over. <laughs> so simple math. $4 billion, $26 million in gross profit divided by 469,796 cars. That means that each car contributed $8,570 profit. Okay, so $8,500 per car in gross profit. That includes the ZEV credits and everything else, okay? Now, I'm going to assume that the same profit will happen for all of 2025. I think that's a reasonable a reasonable estimation, okay? Um, yes, I think that the 
average selling cost will come down. I think the margins will stay about the same or increase. So I think that overall, it'll be about the same profit. Now, it could be up a percent or two or down a percent or two. But guess what? I can, you could do a lot of math. You could do a lot of analysis and not get any closer than I'm going to get on this. So I'm just going to take third quarter, what happened, and I'm going to apply that for all of next year. And that would be 2.26 million cars times 8,570 per car gives you 19.4 billion for the year. If you want to keep it in your head, it's easier to say 20 billion in profit <coughs> for automotive next year. Okay, now let's go to energy, the other major category. So a quick method to determine energy profits. I'm going to take the gross profit from quarter three per gigawatt hour deployed as an estimate for 2025. There were 6.9 gigawatt hours deployed. The profit was 725 million. Therefore, that's $105 million per gigawatt hour. Maybe you want to they keep that easy in your head, 100 million per gigawatt hour. Now for 2025, I am estimate that we will have a rough doubling of the recent run rate of 65 gigawatt hours. This would produce then um, a gross profit for energy. So we're gonna roughly double last year's 30 some gigawatt hours to 65 gigawatt hours, multiply the 65 gigawatt hours times 100 and what did I say, 105, uh, you're going to get 6,825, I'm sorry, 6,825,000,000 <laughs> $6, for energy next year, okay? So uh, easy now in your head, you can remember from now on, it's $100, I mean, a million dollars per gigawatt hour uh, for energy. Uh, that's not right, a billion dollars per gigawatt hour. Okay. So uh, there, there you go for those two. All right, so now we're gonna go to the totals. And I am gonna share my screen for this, and you know how much I love this. It always ends up being such a mess. We're gonna hope that this comes up fairly quickly. Uh, are you able to see my screen now? Let's, let's uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, with any luck at all, you're seeing the screen. So the total profit for 2025, we just said vehicles would come in at 19.4 billion. Then you've got energy at 6.825 billion. You've got robo taxi. I had you know, figured that out yesterday. If you want to look at that uh, program, you can see the details there. Robo taxi at 3.25 billion. Services, and, and that might be a very low number. Services, another about doubling last year, uh, not quite doubling, but uh, you know about 60, 70% higher. Uh, that would be 1.6 billion for the year. So a total, adding that up, of 31 billion 75 million. Now you've got overhead at 12 billion. That's roughly the same as last year. I just kind of took the same number. There's no reason to think it's going to go up dramatically based on the what we've been seeing recently. It might go up another billion. It could be I could be off a billion on that. Other income. 1.2 billion. Now we've got more money in the bank, more interest income, etc. So this could be a little higher, but it's roughly the same as last year. So that would give us total income before tax of 20 billion 275, uh, 20, 20 billion 275 million. The income tax they're using right now is about 22%. So we're going to use that for 0.5 billion subtract. That gives you net income of 15 billion 775 million. Total outstanding shares right now, according to the uh, deck, were three million, uh, three billion one hundred ninety-eight million, and that would give you a total. Dividing that out, that would give you a total EPS of four dollars and ninety-three cents a share. Now, I also wanted to show it without RoboTaxi, and in order to do that, you can't just subtract the RoboTaxi number up there of three point two five billion because you also have to take the tax out on that. So it's seventy-eight percent of that number. So if you subtract that out, you come up with uh, uh, 4.13 4 billion. Um, I'm sorry, you come up with 13.2 billion or an EPS of $4.13 a share. Now then, what are you going to do with this? You want to multiply it times 60? Okay, let's take the 500 times 60. I mean, $5 a share times 60. That would be $300. So that would suggest that those who believe my numbers and think that this is a fair, conservative, maybe even bearish version 
of next year's numbers because it's only 25% uh, increase in vehicles um, and uh, doesn't take into consideration a bunch of stuff that could happen next year. Um, you know, $4.93 times 60, that gives you $300, okay? And a lot of people are suggesting $300 by the end of the year. Larry, I certainly think we'll be at least at $300 by the end of the year. Now then, Tesla recently, because of the growth potential, is starting to, you know, not trade at 60 times. It's starting to trade closer to 100 times. So if you think 100 times is is, uh, is the number, then we'd be looking at $500 a share by the end of the year. So where am I? I'm saying if the street starts to get this, we could get back to all-time high by the end of the year, around 400, 410. Uh, maybe that takes until January, but that would be a reasonable number um, to expect if the street begins to buy this analysis. Um, okay, and then, uh, uh, you know, you could <laughs> apply your own PE. Now, PEs are also, they're not just dependent, you realize, on the earnings per share, um, they're also dependent on the interest rate because then you get your because you take your your future earnings expectations and you draw that down uh, based on uh, the uh, interest rate at the given time. Um, as the interest rates come down, that is going to increase the PEs. OK. And number two is the mood of the market. So just the overall sentiment in the market. If the market is bullish and excited and and uh, and in a positive mood, then there's going to be higher PEs across the board. Um, and if the if the mood is sour and and the and the and the market is in a negative position, then you're going to see lower PEs across the board. Right now, the overall PE for the uh, S and P right now, I believe, is around 25, 24. That's a very high number. That's one of the highest numbers. Uh, we've we you know when you see it at 24 25 that tends to mean that the uh, uh, the uh, uh, equity markets are stretched uh, but earnings are coming out the big earnings are coming out this week we'll talk about that tonight in the uh, regular Monday morning show and um, uh, lots and lots of earnings this week magnificent seven uh, a bunch a bunch of other major major I think um, uh, 10 of the 30 Dow industrial no 10 of the 30 yeah 10 of the 30 now industrials come out this week. So it's a big week for earnings. So we could find out that the uh, S that the um, PE for the overall uh, equities market drops down um, to something more reasonable after all these earnings come out. All right. So what do we got coming up? Well, today I, I don't do a middle of the day show. Oh, I maybe just throw up one of those shorts. Um, but I don't uh, I don't do a show in the middle of the day during football season. It just makes no sense. And then tonight, our regular Monday morning show, which we call I mean, we call it Monday morning. It's on Sunday night and it talks to you about all of the different reports coming out this week. And it is a bonkers week. You do not want to miss the show tonight. It is a bonkers week in terms of the stuff that's going to be coming out, the reporting that's going to be coming out this week. The, all of the earnings reports that are going to be coming out this week, and it's the week before the election. Other than that, no excitement. I mean, you think the World Series is exciting? Holy mackerel. Those first two games, <laughs> yikes. Anyway, but if that's exciting, the numbers for now, if you like numbers and if you like kind of following what's going on in the stock market, what's going on in the economy, the numbers, that what we're going to see for next week is crazy. So join me tonight to, to have a look at that. And then as far as uh, you know, going back and seeing other videos, if you want to see the details on what I just talked about in terms of automotive, robotaxi, and energy, I'll leave the card right here for part one yesterday, which only uh, you know a few thousand of you uh, actually watched, which was surprising to me. That should have been a, a very... Uh, that, that it's a show that you should have take, paid attention to. Okay, so that's it. That's all I got for you right now. As always, uh, it has been great talking to you.